becoming a Jedi. Now they also they later added in the. Oh, I got that trailer out. Okay. Uh, there we go. They later added in the Galactic Civil War, where basically what happened was you could join the Empire or the Rebellion and you could be a normal ordinary person just walking around who had ties with the Empire or the Rebellion you could become active rebel active PvE Rebellion or active PvE um, Empire which allowed you to then go and attack NPC um, NPCs of the, the the opposing faction. So yeah, as a as a rebel soldier, you could don your rebel armor and go off and assault a local um, NPC imperial base and gain reputation for the rebellion by doing that and gaining rewards because you had reputation with them and the reputation translated into a form of rebellion currency or you've got higher re reputation you can have access to certain rebellion stuff like better rebellion armor and there were special operative NPCs who could reveal you as a re an, an open rebel and an open rebel was PvP against anybody who was open Empire so if you really wanted to have some fun you could go to rebel command and say hey I want to reveal my status as a rebel open and at that point you are now going out there and anybody of the opposing faction player or non-player faction can attack you so long as the player of the opposing faction is also in an open PvP status but once again it's it's uh, I'm going to pull up here before I load this out see how close I have to get or I'm allowed to get um, but it's uh, an action yeah that's good Oops, wrong button. Yeah, a lot of people didn't bother doing that. I did it when I was in a starfighter. Yeah, if I'm flying around into my X-wing, I'm an X-wing declared re rebel um, and can attack any um, any Empire pilot on site. And I think there was only there was only one battle where I actually had to run away from it because uh, the other player was significantly better than I was. But for the most part, I would usually win any dogfights in my X-wing because it was quite uh, well. Um, Equipped. Okay, let's go find the other axiom. Uh, oh, that one. Okay, we'll go and collect all the bales here as well. Oh. The pedal is the backwards pedal. But I still think pen and paper role playing games, it's hard to beat them. Because with computer games, they're getting more intelligent. 
but they're usually written very linear stories. You know, you have to do this. If you remember the old text-based role-playing games, you know, if you didn't pick up the axe in the first room, then you couldn't deal with the dwarf in the fifth room. And you'd come to the dwarf and you'd die a few times, can't get past the dwarf, oh, I need the battle axe from room one. And in some, some of those, you couldn't go back, so you were kind of stuffed at that point. And you had to restart the adventure and remember to pick up the axe in the first room before you even left it. Um, and those, those are annoying. When there's a human games master, then they're the ones creating the, um, the puzzles and traps. And they've probably given you a way through the puzzle or the trap. But you don't have to come up with the same solution they did. If you can say, yeah, if you can come up with a way of doing something that is perfectly feasible, that the games master didn't think of, then there's nothing to stop him to say, well, that's not how I, I, I designed this to get through, but there is no reason why this, that, why that idea doesn't work. So yeah make an ability check and let's see if you succeed in doing what you're trying to do and you get past the puzzle by a different method good morning Bimpin how you doing recovered from your total drubbing at World of Warships yesterday or Thursday Yes, and I've also seen that they relented and basically said he played the game fair and honestly and they have no right to withhold his winnings. So they have, um, they have given him his prize. However, he has uh, still got a six-month ban from participating in the tournament because he used basically a Blizzard broadcast to transmit a um, political message. And the whole point of the broadcast was, hey, you won, how do you feel about winning? Not, hey, you won, let's talk about world peace. And... Blizzards basically made the argument that it didn't matter whose whose side he was voicing at that sh on on that particular broadcast. They're not going to stand for any political commentary during a show where we're talking about a tournament and we're interviewing the winner about you know how it feels to have won and isn't you know wasn't his skill amazing um so but they did say that on reflection we should not have taken away his prizes because he played he played the tournament fairly and fairly and honestly and he didn't deserve to have his prize money um confiscated but six month ban for um using the broadcast as a platform for political commentary and the people who were interviewing him were also given a six month ban although that could be kind that's kind of excessive I think because you don't have any control over what somebody says and the interviewers probably had no idea the kid was going to say what he said and how are they supposed to stop him it would be like if someone ran up on the stage and said something yo know, it's not the broadcaster's fault that somebody ran up on stage or for example i went to watch a um a pre-season NFL game in London 
during the 90s, mid 90s. And it was the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Buffalo Bills. And uh, there was a streaker running across the field. Now, the broadcasters, or you know, the producers of the show, made very sure that all the cameras were only pointing at her from the rear. And... I'm not pressing that one. And for the most part, didn't show her running around the field at all. The commentators had something to say about it, but it wasn't... Yeah, you know, it wasn't visual, it was all kind of a, well, you don't get that at American stadiums. Um, sort of, oh yeah, that's something the Brits do here. But, yeah, whatever. Um, and so, it was kind of, there was a little bit of tongue-in-cheek, but it was mostly responsible broadcasting. Now, if she'd run into the studio while the camera was on the guy, yeah, or if she if she'd actually run, taken her top off in front of the cameras, and then as she was running across the field, then there is a split second that you've got to react, and unless you've got a broadcast delay, things are going to be seen, and you can't hold the broadcast responsible for the act of someone else. You can hold the broadcaster responsible for. Um, Continuing. I mean, if you watch, um, I don't know that it's that prevalent anymore, but if you watch um, Police Pursuits on TV, live, uh, there was one many, many years ago where someone had... Uh, What's it? The end of the chase, he took out a gun and shot himself in the head. And it was caught on camera and broadcast on live TV. And since then, um, they've broadcast those with five, ten second delays on the, uh, on the broadcast so that they can cut the feed if something like that happens. Um, they could have cut the mic, but the interviewers don't ha necessarily have that ability. Um, that would be down to the producers. And as I said, I didn't see it. Um, I haven't bothered watching it. It's not a game I play. So, not really much interest. But um, if he blurts out one sentence, by the time you cut the mic, it's already too late. He said what he wanted to say, and you're done. Stop, stop. Keep pressing the wrong button. Back up. Okay, there we go. I mean, I think Blizzard's reflective action is probably as fair as you're going to get. You know, the guy competed in a tournament. He won. The uh, the rewards for for winning the tournament were clearly stated before you entered, and there wasn't. He didn't do anything that warrants losing necessarily losing the prizes. Now, some people might be annoyed at what he said. Other people support what he said, and. Yeah, I'm for free speech, but there is a time and place to uh, exercise it. You have the right of free speech. You do not have the right of free speech in my living room. And because of where I live, you also don't really have the right of free speech in my go you know, on on the streets in front of my front yard. because that doesn't make me happy and I have the right to 
liberty and freedom and the pursuit of happiness or whatever it is. It's Yeah, there's and yeah, your your right of redress is you know, protest the government. Nobody should be outside the front of my house yelling things because I'm not the government. And I think in some ways that's where America's got a little bit off. Off the case, he's nobody seems to. Oh, uh, uh, far too many people don't seem to respect other people. Yeah, I have the right to live where I live in a relatively peaceful neighbourhood, and you don't have the right to uh, to come into that neighbourhood, trash it, and make a mess of it. People have a right to go to. Um, come on, no. People have a right to go to rallies that support Trump or support Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders. They have the right to go there, listen to what the person says, whether they support them or not. You know, I want to hear what this person has to say because I'm trying to decide whether I want to vote for them. You don't have the right to be outside and beat up everybody who's coming out of those um, events just because you don't agree with the person. Doesn't mean you have the right to inflict your personal opinions on everybody else. And, you know, America's becoming a problem in that regard. And I don't like discussing politics, but. I'm not going to get politically, you know, this person good, this person bad, but pe you know, the bad actors on both sides are a problem. And the people who are losing out are the majority. Who are in the middle thinking, what on earth is going on? You know. I won't even go into Ann Arbor when there's a, a football game on because if you're there at the wrong time they close all the streets off and you can't get anywhere like out of the city I think one football game I ended up between the two main streets away from the football game and they closed off both ends of the street and it's sort of well how am I supposed to go home oh you've got to wait until everybody from the stadium has left before you can go home now. Oh, what about all the frozen goods I've got in my uh, trunk because I just went grocery shopping? Yeah, well, that's a problem, isn't it? Thank you. I sort of, yeah, okay, from now onwards I'm not going to Ann Arbor when there's a game on because that's an inconvenience. And in similar ways, I tend to, you know, if I know that there's an event going on in a city, if I'm not going to that event, I'm not going to that section of that city because um, traffic and protests and everything else are just going to get in the way. But, uh, yeah, to be walking through a city past somewhere where there's an event and someone says, oh, you're not protesting against that event, I need to beat you up, uh, doesn't strike me as particularly tolerant or... Um, accepting of people, especially if I'm not even involved in the event. I'm not going there, I'm just, you know, going to McDonald's around the corner. Uh, ten. I've probably put up a lot, put up a lot of viewers now. Okay. So, who's that? They're coming at 11. They're coming at 11. Ooh, okay. So we're going to have to tie this up soon.
because our friends coming to do the yard work are going to be here at 11 so that gives us 50 minutes to finish mowing these fields come on tractor go faster I'm going to take this up here, grab the last few bales, I may park this up at the top. another safety uh, weight by the looks of it. And uh, again wrong. Got that one. Fold that up, we'll go park by the gate. over by the other tractors. Stop there, turn the engine off. I think I'll get out and walk. But going back to uh, the dude who won the Hearthstone event, I mean in essence he's got He's got his 10,000 winnings, which legitimately he won. And now he is not allowed to enter a tournament for the next six months. So that affects his income, potentially. Where are we going? That I have to turn on. Oh. Is that on follow or not? Yes, that's on follow. Uh, that, I think, is following the wrong tractor. There we go. No. Where are you going? W to turn on GPS, unfortunately it's the left control and not the right one. And now, future plans for this farm would probably include replacing this get-up with a big M. We have the money to afford that sort of equipment. And 
and uh, yeah up until now it's been a case of well it takes a big tractor to do this but uh, no big deals because I've got one but I don't need to be putting the hours on it for this grass work like we are getting a bunch of new British maps very soon that season's ready for Farm Sim 19. So while I've said I will possibly, once we're done with this farm, transfer to Oakfield Farm, I might not. I will be reviewing the available farms or the available maps to see which one I like the most. Because this series is a long term series. This is. This will be a Saturday morning series. Pretty much only. And so. It will run till at least Farm Sim 2020 comes out if not beyond. Right, I started this farm watching Arthur's YouTube videos or stream whilst playing this map. And it was my only stream when I started, or my only farm sim stream when I started, because I started September last year when Farm Sim 17 was the only one available, and when Farm Sim 19 came out, this stayed in the rotation, but Saturday mornings only. We skipped a couple of sessions. I've been you know, away for the weekend or adoption classes or um, foster care classes or things that are unavoidable avoidable at the weekends but for the most part I think we've kept this up fairly consistently. From next week there will possibly more be more disruptions. Maybe not, because our house should be going up for sale. So all the things that that entails. But once it's sold and under contract, we should have a few weekends before things happen. I didn't check the other tractors for uh, fuel levels, but this one's running a bit low. So we missed one on the turn. No, that's not the turn. I don't know why we missed that one. Turn around before the trees. Helper D has completed their task. Ah, that would be the uh, fertilizer dude has finished his task. Or well, the 
the weed in, dude. As I was trying to say earlier, I, I set him up on the weeder because it's uh, it doesn't matter that it's slow. It's it's free to use, and I'm not driving it, so I don't care. And ideally, I'm concentrating on getting the grass cut, not fertilising the other fields. at the bottom right hand side of field 34 so there's essentially all that point to the right of the middle hasn't been done and there's possibly some bits at the top on the left which got skipped because workers and not square fields think of much else that's going on right this moment. We have put in an inquiry on adoption <coughs> to the adoption uh, resource. And, uh, no word on that. That was late this week, so we probably don't expect to hear anything for a while. correctly that involves us getting more details about the child in question which we get to review and then we get to ask questions in a sort of a group meeting and then we get to meet the child as a sort of uh, it? an hour's meet get together probably eat something whatever and there'll be a few of those uh, and then we see where we go from there but because we're looking at adopting old, an older child the older child has a say in whether they like us as well young children not so much you, yeah, you get to meet young children and um, you know if they're not completely Anti, then it's probably going to go ahead but with an older child they actually get involved in the adoption discussion so it's not just down to us and the care workers I wonder if we can go faster skip it up to one stage into eight some more mowing this afternoon in real life. Uh, that looks to be a reasonable gap, so 8 miles an hour is doable. 
Also, the uh, field is only 66% grown, so we're not getting 100% yield off this. I try to do uh, grass cutting on the last day of spring, last day of summer, last day of fall. Last day in summer, last day of fall will be 100% growth. But because the grass, grass doesn't start growing until the first day of spring, uh, 